when I'm working on websites or when I'm working on any kind of graphic projects, quite often I request a vector image from my client. And the client may say, oh, well, we don't have such a thing or even better yet, what the heck is a vector image, right? So, so maybe that's the question I have to answer first. So a raster image or a, a flattened image like a JPEG or a ping or a bitmap is it's what's called a rasterized image. So that image is set to the dimensions that the creator had saved it as. So let's say a video is 1920 by 1080. So if you have a screenshot from that video, that screenshot is going to be 1920 by 1080. Now you can scale that down and it's going to look great. You can shrink it and it's going to look fantastic. However, if you ever tried to make it bigger, so let's say you wanted to fit it on a 4K screen. Well, now what you're doing is you're taking that 1080p uh, screenshot and you're stretching it. And well, how does a computer stretch an image? Well, it recreates all the pixels. It stretches them and each pixel is stretched. So eventually, when you get big enough, you're going to get distortion, you're going to get blurriness. And this happens when you take a logo. It's a perfect example. When you take a little logo from a website and you try to print it on a billboard, well, that's not going to look good. And somebody with some quality control is going to tell you, don't do that. We need a vector image. Well, what is a vector image? How can I get a vector image? I don't have one. Okay. So then myself as a graphic I, I, I'm not a graphic designer, but I'll use that term loosely in that I'll take your graphics and I'll be quality control and I'll make sure that it's ready for you for your billboard. What can I do to help? A lot of times you have access to those graphics as raster images, but they're not vector. So again, it's a logo. If I scale it up, if I make that little logo that's meant for a website and scale it up to a billboard, it's going to get all grainy. It's going to get blurry. It's going to get those like blocky pixels. It's going to look terrible in the end. So you want to avoid that at all costs. Vector is where it's at. Vector images are basically the difference is instead of a rendered image that has the pixels all kind of saved on that canvas, it's a text file that directs well, here's a curve, okay? So if this is a curve, that curve is going to be the same either this big at that or this big at that. That's what vector is. It's going to allow you to scale it up and the curve is going to stay the same. The, the image is going to look just as good if you print it on a 500 foot billboard versus, and I don't know if such a thing exists, but if it does, you could print it with a vector. If you took a raster image and did that, it would be horrible. But it often comes up in my industry, and, and perhaps you've encountered this where it's like, I don't have a vector, so what am I going to do? So today we're looking at how to use Linux and free software in order to convert a raster image into a vector. Now, there are online tools that allow you to do this. That's cool. But if you ever look at the source code, you're going to realize that those online tools that do this for free, all they're doing is... And, and quite often, not, not necessarily all the, uh, always, and it's not always the case, but quite often those free tools are taking that raster image and they're putting it in a vector and then they're embedding the raster image into a vector file. So it's still raster. Instead, what we want to do is we want to take that image and we want to trace around all of the curves. So if there's a letter S, I want to trace around that letter S so that when I scale it up, it's going to look absolutely perfect. Well, how do I do that? That sounds like a lot of work because we're thinking in raster terms, right? We're thinking in the GNU image manipulation program or Photoshop and how we'd have to trace around everything and it would just be absolutely brutal. But Linux makes it a lot easier. So let's jump into my terminal. I'm going to bring up my computer here. And all we need is a simple program, um, which I'm going to install first. But then we're going to grab a logo off of the web. So I'm going to become root. So on Linux Mint, it's sudo su or sudo su for those purists. And enter your password. 
Now that I'm the super user, so I'm the root user, now I can type apt update, and that's going to grab my latest repository information from the web. So these are the online available Linux applications. And I'm going to go apt install, and there's a really simple command here, po trace. That's going to grab a program called, I don't know if it's called potrace or po trace. We'll call it potrace. And I've said yes. Now that is installed. So if I type potrace dash dash help, I should get a help dialog there. That's fantastic. All right. So we've got it installed. Now let's jump on the web. So I'm going to get on here and let's actually, you know, let's, let's grab uh, the category 5.tv logo. Let's see how that's going to work. So there it is. It's on the web. And if I right click on it and go open image in new tab, let's click on that. And there's my image. Wow, that's really, really tiny. I don't know how well that's going to scale. You probably, you know, that makes me think about the initial quality control as we're doing this. We want to try to get the biggest image we can. We want to try to get it as something that has an alpha layer, like a ping, for example. That would be perfect. Um, and we want to make sure that it's as clear as possible. If it's got dithered edges or a drop shadow behind it, it's not going to render well as a vector. Because vectors are completely different than a raster image. They're not colorized, but they can be colorized on the like when you display them so you can say okay well that part is going to be this pantone and that part is going to be this pantone but it's a lot different because it's not saving it as the same rastered image so what i might want to do with my category 5 tv network logo that you see there on my screen is i might want to do something like grab the master image that one looks like it's got some drop shadowing going and i i could probably go to wiki.category5.tv and on my wiki i could find uh branding and go to the category 5 branding and i can grab one of these full scale images so maybe something a little more like this would be to my liking so at the bottom here i've got a word mark file and you can do that by, you know, even just getting onto Google Images or something and, and finding uh, a larger image for the images that you're looking for. So something like that will look pretty good. But notice that this is actually a ping file. Yeah, it scales well, but it's a ping. So let's save it. I'm going to throw that on my desktop, and it's called wordmark underscore light dot ping. So you can see it right there. So there it is. So it's a raster image. Yes. I happen to have one that's 7444 by 2187 pixels. It's going to do really, really well regardless. It's a giant image. But what if you've got something else? Like, let's go on to Google Images. And just do a quick search for, I'm going to do a search for logo. And let's see what we can come up with. All right, we got Burger King, we got McDonald's, we got Ikea. Let's grab the Ikea logo. Um, we have no rights to use that, but I, this is for the sake of the demonstration. So fair use says, hey, we're, we're showing you how to do this. There we go. So we've got two logos on my desktop. We've got the Category 5 TV logo, and we've got the IKEA logo. Sound good? So with this program installed, so I've got Potrace installed, and now I'm going to go to my desktop and look at the images that I have there, and both of those are ping images. Now, one of the things with Potrace that we need to keep in mind is that Potrace only supports bitmap images. So for the sake of the demonstration and just for the ease of use and for familiarity, I want to use BMP files. So back on my computer, I'm going to bring up the GNU image manipulation program. Remember, I'm doing this all from Linux. Linux is a free operating system. The GNU image manipulation program is a free image editor. Everything that I'm doing here is available absolutely free to anyone who wants to do this. If you're on Windows and saying, oh, but how do I do this on Windows? You know what? You can install Linux, and that's one way that you can achieve this. All right, so I'm going to export as. So I've got the Category 5 TV logo I'm going to export this as a bitmap. So I'm just going to change the extension, BMP, and hit enter. Now it's going to ask me a couple of things here. It's going to say, uh, okay, compatibility options. 
let's open that and make sure that this is not checked. Do not write color space information. Now we absolutely need color space information. That's a requirement of Potrace. In advanced options, we can see 16-bit, 24-bit, and 32-bit. The default is 32-bit ARGB. That stands for alpha, red, green, blue. Now we do want RGB, but we do not want 32-bit because Potrace is probably going to have problems with that. Instead, we're going to go with 24-bit RGB. So I'm going to click on that. And now RGB 24-bit is selected and I'm going to click export. So now on my desktop, I should have another file here called WordMark Lite BMP. And when I double click on that, it is my logo. Look at that. It's still a raster image. If I, if I scale that too much, I'm going to start losing quality. I wonder if I can actually show you that. You can see that if I zoom way in. Do you see those pixelated edges? See how grainy that is and how blocky that is? That's a raster image because it saved each and every pixel. So instead, we're going to create a vector based on that file. Remember, the first step is that I do need that bitmap file. So whether it's a ping source or a JPEG or whatever it happens to be, you need to convert it first to a bitmap and then Potrace will be able to work with it. So now I'm going to type Potrace and there's a couple of things. Now you can do dash dash help to learn more, see how this works and what you want to do. You can kind of scroll up here and see what kind of options are available to you. But I'm going to tell you what I think is going to work just fine for us. And we'll see here live on the air if this is going to work. I'm going to do um, dash S, which means I'm going to save this as an SVG vector image. Then I'm going to say dash group and dash group is, a, is an SVG option. And what that does is it groups related paths together. So it's going to merge all those into a single, um, basically a vector um, tr like traversal point. I don't know the technical terms, but rather than having a whole bunch of separate things in your SVG file, it's going to merge those together. So let's group those together to keep things nice and clean. Now I want to tell it my output. I'm going to call this logo.svg, SVG being a scalable vector format. And then the next thing that I can do, this is optional, but I'm going to do dash dash tight. And what dash dash tight does is it, if there's a lot of white space around your logo that you're working with, it's going to bring that in. It's going to basically auto crop that vector for you so that you don't have a bunch of white space. From a vector perspective, I think that's a good idea. Um, and then the next thing is my input file. So that file was called wordmark light dot BMP. Now I'm just going to hit enter. And as soon as I hit enter, if everything, oh, what did I do? It says Potrace, invalid option, dash, dash, zero. Oh, why did I push zero? That was supposed to be an O for output. <laughs> there you go. So remember, dash O, not dash zero. Enter. And did you see how quickly that popped up a logo.svg file on my desktop? So if I double click on that file, now you can see category five, and it's stripped away the green. So that's a problem for me, but this is in fact a vector. So why did it strip away the green? Well, it's grayscale, right? So maybe I can work with that. I can look at the options that are available to me. Let's see if grayscaling it would do some kind of difference. So looking at our uh, output options here, let's get a closer look and see what kind of options we have as far as the colorization goes. We've got resolution, scale, stretch, rotate, margin, left margin, bottom margin, page size, all these things. Oh, dash color, set foreground color, fill color, opaque. But if you're, if you're not sure, there are ways to do it. There are ways to have it dither for you. But there's something that we can do here. So remember, we created that bitmap ourselves, right? And remember that what a, vec a vector is, is basically the outlines of this file. So let's export that again. Let's create a new export. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to go image mode grayscale and then image mode RGB again. 
So I've just grayscaled it. Let's see if that's going to do it for us. There's still a lot of white there. I'm going to overwrite that file, set the same settings. I want to be 24-bit and export that. All right, I'm just going to minimize that and see what happens here. So let's po-trace that again and see if that's made any difference. And it hasn't. So our color is causing a problem with this particular vector because it's trying to get those edges and it's seeing the black, but it's not seeing the green. So how can I f fix that? And it's not seeing the white either. It's seeing that as like a background color. So back in GIMP, the GNU image manipulation program, I can turn on uh, alpha hold. So this is uh, lock the alpha channel and then choose black and right click and go edit fill with foreground color and so I've created that as a completely black image. Now I can go file export as wordmarklight.bmp export and replace set my settings and export. So now I've got an image that's a bitmap that is all black. So now if I run that command again you don't have to be afraid to experiment and try things out. That is the actual vector. So this is the logo.svg. This is the logo.bmp. So with the logo.bmp, I'm going to hit one and then I'm going to hit plus one, two. Can I zoom in? One, two, control plus one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to hit, I'm going to come over here. So this is the bitmap. You see those edges? How kind of awful those are? One, two, three, four, five. See that? Jagged edges, right? So let's do the same thing. Let's go back to our SVG file that we've output. And let's zoom into that. And let's go zoom in a whole bunch of times and move over here. Notice the background is gone too. See how clean that edge is? Because now we're working with a vector file. I've zoomed in uh, 100, uh, 1,500 times. And, you can, and it's really, really hard to scroll because I'm scaled in so close. But now... Okay, I'm zoomed in 2,000 times, which is the absolute maximum. And you can see that that edge has absolutely no jagged edges whatsoever. So I can scale that up to no matter what I want it to be. And it's not going to be jagged edge. If I open that with the GNU image manipulation program now, it's an SVG file. So what is it saying? Hey, this is a render scalable vector graphic. This is the width and height. And what do you want to do? Well, let's make it a ridiculous amount. Let's make it 30,000 pixels wide. You think this is going to crash my computer? Let's hit OK. It might crash my computer. That's ridiculously high res. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to view it at one times. And look at that. See those edges? That is actually one of the letters in our logo. They're absolutely perfect no jagged edge, because this is legitimately a vector. And I mentioned there that some of these online tools that do this for free are going to cause you to have like a, a rasterized image within a vector that's not going to scale up like that. So let's actually see how we can determine that. So if I open with, and let's actually open our SVG file with a text editor. And I can see that those SVG paths have been traced by Potrace. So these are actually the paths of the vector. Now, what you'll see if it's not vector, if it's just like a fake vector, is that you'll see that it has like an embed with um, like some ping data. Well, this is a true vector. So there you have it. And I mentioned about this IKEA logo. So let's actually see what happens here with the IKEA logo because I want to see, I, I want you to know that this is not something that I'm just pretending. I'm going to export that one. And I'm going to save that on my desktop as dot what? Dot BMP. Enter. Compatibility options. Make sure that the color space information is saved. And you notice I'm trying to click on advanced options and it's not letting me do that. Well, why is that? Okay, there's something wrong here. If we cancel out, one of the things I can see about this image is that this particular image is indexed color. Do you remember back when I was working on the Category 5 logo, I had to switch back to RGB? Well, if I right-click on the image and go Image Mode, you can see that it is selected as indexed. 
Let's change that to RGB. Now that it's RGB, I can export as a bitmap. So export as, change it to BMP. And now, look at that. I've got my advanced options back. And I can click on 24 bits, which was the default for this logo. Make sure that the color space information is saved and hit export. So now on my desktop, I've got a nice little image file, a duplicate. It looks like a duplicate, but this one is a bitmap. So now back in my terminal, let's try that one. So I'm just going to press the up arrow on my Linux keyboard and remove the source image from the last command and instead change that to IKEA underscore 2019 logo dot BMP and hit enter. And instantly I see a new IKEA. Oh, no, it's saved as logo dot SVG because of the dash O command. Let's see what that looks like. Ta-da! So that's a vector of the IKEA logo. Well, that's not exactly what I would want. Remember, vector is not saving the color information. It's saving the paths, right? The color information is going to be separate. That's something that you're going to provide to your graphic designer. Or maybe your logo doesn't have a whole lot. But watch this. Uh, so if I do that command again, now I'm going to add to that command. I don't know if I can do it at the end, but I'm going to type dash dash invert. And now that I've typed dash dash invert, and I open that image again, look at the difference. It's inverted that logo for me, and now I have a perfect vector that looks like that. So again, if I open that in the GNU image manipulation program, and I'm only doing that because this is a raster program, but I want you to see that this is indeed a vector image. Now if I take that and I make it 50,000 pixels wide, 18,708 pixels high, <laughs> it says, I don't have enough memory for that. Let's try a, a little bit smaller. Open with GNU image manipulation program. You see it is vector. Let's try 10,000 pixels wide. 3,742 pixels high. There we go. All right. Hit one, and you can see those edges are flawless. Well, how's the round edge look? Let's jump up. Look at that, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. There you have it. So that is one way that we can actually very, very quickly convert a ping to a bitmap, make sure that it's grayscale or that the colors are going to convert properly into a vector, and then actually use a free tool that's available through our repositories. I used apt dash, uh, I used apt install potrace. You can use apt dash get install Potrace, or you can use yum install Potrace, depending on your distribution. I'm on Linux Mint, and so apt install Potrace got me there. And as long as I've got a bitmap image that's going to be compatible with it, I can uh, convert that to a, re uh, a vector image very, very quickly. I've done it before. I've manually traced images in order to create a vector, and it's a brutal process. You saw it live. How long did that take? We did it. Let me know below. Comment below how that has helped you as far as your logo creation process, converting images to vector. And now you can take that rastered image and scale it up as big as you want it. It doesn't matter if you want to print that on the 500 foot wide billboard. It's going to work for you and it's going to look fantastic. Fantastic.